Hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Mary and today's video is going to be a book versus adaptation review of The Last Thing He Told Me by Laura Dave. The way I normally structure these videos is that I go through a spoiler-free review of the book and then a spoiler-free review of the show, basically say, stating for the show portion how I felt the adaptation did at adapting the novel and uh, then I will get into spoilers, but just a brief overview. This book and television show are um, about a woman named Hannah who is married to a man named Owen and she has a 16 year old stepdaughter named Bailey and Owen works at this place called The Shop which is as far as I can tell some sort of computer IT brand thing. They're making a software that is supposed to make it easier for you to disappear from the internet and The Shop it turns out has gone public before the software is ready and so the FBI gets involved or the technology is not ready yet, but they already went public and you're not allowed to do that. So they have investors and they basically are defrauding people of money. Um, again, Owen works for the shop. And so once these arrests are being made, Owen goes missing. Um, and Hannah does not understand why Owen has disappeared, but we quickly unravel secrets from Owen's past. Um, and then Hannah and his daughter Bailey go on this sort of adventure uh, to try to track down Owen and where they think he might have gone and who he might actually be, what he's hiding from, what he's running from, etc. I will say uh, my spoiler free thoughts on the book. Again, I will insert them. I did read this book yesterday and the day before. Um, it was a fairly quick read. I listened to it via audio. And this book is about a woman who is a she's like 40 I think and she's married a man who has a daughter um who's 16 and the daughter's name is Bailey the woman's name I can't remember and the husband's name is Owen and essentially what happens at the beginning of this book is that Owen is part of this startup company that went public before it was complete and the government found out that the coding for the thing that they were making was not complete yet and so the company is basically being taken down and her husband has gone missing and so he leaves a note that says protect her and she the mom is trying or the stepmom is trying to figure out what that means he also leaves a duffel bag of cash for his daughter and basically stepmom and bailey are trying to figure out answers for where the girl's father and the woman's husband have has gone um that is the essential premise of this book um i will be watching the tv show hopefully in the next couple of days it is on apple plus i don't have apple tv currently but i'm gonna get it um i'm trying to get a, t a trial to see if i can watch the episodes the last one comes out i believe on the 19th so hopefully i can start the show either today or tomorrow and get it done today is the 16th um and i can get this uploaded to you on sunday if not it'll be uploaded when it's uploaded uh but that is the plan for this video and i will let you know once more things have occurred and once i've watched the show how i feel like the show did at adapting this book this is a series that i do on my channel where i read books and then watch the adaptations of said books to determine if I think that the adaptation did a good job and was faithful to the novel. And then if it changes things, whether I liked the change that was made in the adaptation and whether I not, or not the adaptation as a whole makes sense. So that's the plan for this one as well. I'm really excited that a lot of companies are now making books into miniseries instead of making them just movies. Cause I feel like movies have a, a stronger tendency to cut things out from the book and make it a little less accurate of a representation because they have to sum things up together to get it to be like under two hours. So um, I will let you know how things go, but I wanted to first give a quick review of the book. I enjoyed it. I think I ended up giving it four stars and um, it's not an all time favorite for me, but it was interesting. I did not expect what was happening, but there were certain twists that I did kind of know were going to be the case. I will get more into that when we get into the spoiler section of this video. I'm going to do this section as a spoiler free review. The next section will be a spoiler free review of the TV show and how I felt it was as an adaptation. And then I will get into spoilers for both. So um, stick around if you want to watch that. Uh, like this video if you enjoy it. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more content like this. And let me know in the comments down below if you read this book or watch the show or if you plan to in the future. But I will um, check back in with you when I watch the show. My thoughts on the show are essentially that I, I enjoyed the adaptation for what it, for what it was, but I don't really feel like the show did as good of a job of other shows that I've seen of making you like sit on the edge of your seat and wonder what's happening next. And I'm wondering if that is because I had just finished the book when I was watching the show and I wasn't like, I gave the book four stars. I thought it was, I thought it was decent. I did not think it was like the best thing I'd ever read, but I enjoyed reading it. Um, the show, on the other hand, I didn't, 
like dislike my watch of it. I didn't think that it was a bad television show by any means. I really like Jennifer Garner um, and she plays Hannah, the main character. I really liked the actress that they picked to play Bailey. I thought she did a really good job, um, but I just felt like there was something about the show that made it not as engrossing for me as I would want from a story of this type. Now that that is out of the way, I am gonna get into spoilers. So if you have not seen the show or read the book and you don't wanna be spoiled for it, I would click off this video here. Um, if you have seen the show and read the book or just seen one or the other and you don't care about spoilers, regardless, this is the portion of the video for you. So I believe this is a seven episode mini series, which I prefer. I really am glad that a lot of companies are making television shows or miniseries instead of films. Basically, I am gonna talk about a few differences that I noticed between the book and the show, and then also how I felt the show handled those and why I am opining as to why I think certain things are different. So uh, basically the show opens up in a scene in a hotel room in Austin, Texas, which if you've read the book, you know that they don't actually go to Austin until later. And the scene is actually um, towards the like middle, end middle of the book, if you will. Basically, it's the opening scene where Hannah is destroying her cell phone in Austin because she's just learned this thing that Owen, uh, the reason that Owen has disappeared, basically. Um, and so she smashes her phone and she's telling Bailey, like, we got to go. We got to go home. We got to get out of Austin. We can't be in Austin anymore. And Bailey is nowhere to be found in this hotel room. And then Hannah turns around and sees someone. And you know that she recognizes this person, but you don't know who it is um, if you are watching the show. And then we go back to the beginning of the storyline. So that's something that was different. And I, I really enjoyed that it the show sort of dropped you in the middle of the action. I've noticed that some shows will do that. Um, I do think it kind of, I don't want to say it doesn't really spoil anything, but it does. I mean, it lets you know that something big is coming, um, which I think could be a pro or a con for different viewers. I think some viewers who need to know, like something to have something to look forward to and to know that something big is going to happen will appreciate that. And I think some people who don't necessarily need that will dislike that it kind of jars you into the opening sequence, but I did not mind it. I do think it was a, a good way of hooking the audience in. Another thing I will note, just a general difference between the show and the book is the book does not happen in linear order. Um, there are flashbacks to things that Hannah is recalling conversations that she's had with her husband um, and different things that have happened in the past six months or um, like there's one that's like 36 hours before he disappears and different things like that. Um, and in the book these are very clearly delineated with like six months ago, three months ago, one year ago, like with the timeline. Um, the movie or the show it does not do that as well. And I don't think it was necessarily confusing, but I do kind of wish that there had been a more distinct timeline. But I think the show was trying to make it more like she's thinking about this thing that has happened in the past. It doesn't matter when it happened. Um, and while that is true that it technically doesn't like really matter the exact date of certain things occurring, I think it could have been helpful to have that concreteness defined for the viewer. Another really big difference between the book and the show is there's a character named Carl who is an attorney. Um, I think he works at the shop or in the show they have him working at the shop. Um, in the book, he's just a friend of Owen's that Hannah is now friends with. And in the book, it's like well known that Carl has had multiple affairs and he's like cheating on his wife constantly. And Hannah really dislikes him for this and doesn't trust him for this. But also she says that Owen is willing to look past this. And that's like a big part of Owen's personality is that he's willing to look past people's flaws to the real them. And in the show, they change it. Instead of Carl having an affair, um, it turns out he has a gambling addiction. And the way that this all comes to light and is even relevant is that Hannah needs an attorney um, and oh, uh, Carl is an attorney that she knows. And so she goes to find Carl and is trying to convince Carl to like help her work out this Owen situation. She doesn't know where Owen is and the FBI has come to her at this point. The marshals, US marshals have come to her door at this point and she's just really confused. She needs a lawyer. So she's contacted Carl and Carl's wife basically is like, we gave all of our money to the shop um, and Owen knew that the shop was going under. All of our life savings are in the shop and like basically screw you for not telling us. I doubt that you knew. And she says something else that I thought was really poignant. She says that every marriage has a liar and a fool. And so she says, you're either a really good liar or you're the fool. Um, and so I thought that was a really interesting touch. And then later Carl comes to apologize to Hannah and is like, listen, I told my wife that we put all our money in the shop because she noticed that all of our accounts were drained, but really 
what happened is he's in some gambling thing in Costa Rica. Like he's been gambling away their money basically. Um, I think it's sports betting. I don't entirely know what that was supposed to be. Um, I guess it doesn't really ultimately matter what his vice is, but I really enjoyed and thought it made more sense that he would be giving money in the book. He has gotten one of his mistresses pregnant. And so he has a second family that he's paying for. Um, and I, again, ultimately it doesn't matter, but I think the reason they changed it for the show is because they didn't want to have to include like background about him always cheating on his wife. But just through like a couple of lines in the show, Hannah is able to communicate to Carl that she knows that he has a gambling problem in the, or has had a gambling problem in the past. And he says, yeah, I'm back to that. And so it could easily have been like, so-and-so is pregnant. And she's like, I thought you ended things with her. And he's like, oh, well, no, I didn't. Like it could have been very easily fixed. And so I'm not really sure why they decided to change that fact. I just thought it was interesting that they did. Um, if you know why they might've changed that or have an idea, I would love to hear your idea. So essentially what happens, the reason they end up going to Austin is because Bailey remembers going to a wedding in Austin when she's like three years old. Her mom is still alive at this point. That's the other big thing. Bailey's mom died when she was four in a car accident. And that's something she's known her whole life. And so she thinks she's from Seattle, but for some reason she remembers being at the UT stadium um, with a bunch of orange stuff everywhere, which if you don't know, UT's colors are like burnt orange and white. And so um, she remembers being like at the stadium, then they walked and they went to a church. And so Hannah's like, this is the best we got. You and me, we're going to Austin. We are going to like, find this church. We're going to try to dig up your memories. And the show makes a really big deal about how Hannah has read this book about how to like recover memories. Um, I don't really know why that's that big of a deal, but I guess they're trying to explain why she wanted to do this. Um, so to me, it was in the, in the book, it was just sort of an act of desperation. So they go to Austin and in Austin, for some reason, one of the plot points of the show is that their internet is just like horribly spotty. Um, and so they can't like use their maps. And I don't understand why this is a thing because like Austin is a big, like a major city in the US. So for example, I recently went to Spain and my fiance used his phone, like had like an international, he didn't buy an international plan, which I think might've been the difference. But if you use your phone abroad with his phone plan, he has Verizon, um, it's like $10 a day or something. And so he turned on his phone so he could like use his phone abroad, but he said that he could not use his data. Like his data wasn't working anywhere. Um, and so we had to be connected to Wi-Fi to basically use our phones at all. Um, which I can use my phone on airplane mode and be connected to Wi-Fi and not use any mobile data at all. So I thought that was interesting, but like, it's not like they were in a different country. They live in Sausalito in California, which is near San Francisco. And apparently I learned that reading this book. And now they're in Austin, Texas, which is not like a small town. Like, I just don't see how the internet, I know that like different internet providers or different phone providers are more popular in different parts of the country. But I just don't think that like, unless they were using like a small Sausalito based phone company, I don't see how that could be an issue. If you know, let me know. But I mean, I've been to Austin. I've been, I've never been to California, but like I've been to Austin. I live in the Midwest now. I used to live in Dallas. I've lived in Arkansas. My phone has worked everywhere that I've been in the United States. And so I've never run into this issue. So I thought, I just thought that was really interesting that she like couldn't get data and that was her explanation so she calls her a friend back in california her friend jules um and jules is also dating the girl who broke this story um in the book i want to say jules is the one who broke this story and told owen ahead of time um and that's why he got out of town but in the show i want to say it was her girlfriend or wife or whoever max who actually broke the story and she is who told Owen. So I don't, I also don't know why they changed that. So the reason that they need internet is because they're trying to find, they're trying to find churches that are in walking distance of the stadium. So they go to the stadium and they are looking around to try to remember. And Bailey's like, you know, I remember being in a flower or like in a, in a dress and I was itchy and uncomfortable. And then we walked to a church afterwards. And so they're calling Jules to try to figure out what churches are in walking distance of the Longhorn Stadium. And I honestly think that, I think in the book, they end up getting a map at the hotel. And so they use the physical map to find out what churches are nearest. Um, but I don't know, it just seemed like a random plot point that didn't need to be in there. I guess they wanted to maybe have Jules in more scenes. I don't really know. She was a bigger character in the book than she was in the show. I mean, in the show than she was in the book. So I think that's probably why, but um, I don't know. As they're going to different churches, one of the plot points is that 
um, Bailey remembers being in this one church. So they asked the lady at the church if they had any weddings during the certain football season when Bailey would have been about two or three. And the, um, the lady who works there is like, sorry, the church was shut down during football season that year, um, for renovation. So we didn't have any weddings. And so they're really frustrated. They're stuck in a rut. And then the girls remember that, um, they're like back at the hotel, racking their brains to try to remember different things about Owen. Um, cause Owen used to always tell these stories to them and they're like, these stories have got to be true. So they list a couple of examples. And one example that they come up with is that he had this favorite professor, um, of mathematics when he was in college. And he said he went to college at Princeton, but they look up this professor, they remember his name and he teaches at the University of Texas. So again, hinting that Owen actually lived in Austin and did not ever live on the East Coast like he said he did. So they don't know why he's lying about himself. That's the other thing. I forgot to mention this. Hannah ends up calling her ex-fiance who is an attorney in New York. And her ex-fiance does a little digging and finds out that Owen and Bailey did not exist before they lived in Sausalito. So he's basically like, they've got fake IDs, fake, their lives are faked. Um, I don't know where they came from, but there's no record of them in Seattle where they were supposed to have lived before. And we don't know where they came from before them moving to Sausalito. So, um, that's like a fact. So now they're realizing that Owen is not at all who he said he was. And Bailey's freaking out because she's not who she said she was either. And so, um, the other thing is because U.S. Marshals are involved, that's usually to do with like protective service. So they're saying he's either like running from something way bigger than this shop thing, or he's like in protective custody. But if he's in protective custody, the marshal should know where he is and they don't. And so that they're freaking out about that. Hannah does not know who she can trust at this point. And they are obviously they've hit a, a wall with the, the church thing. Um, and so they're trying to remember stories that Owen has told them because they think they can't all be lies. They look up this professor that he said he had and the guy teaches at the University of Texas. And so they decide to go to the University of Texas to find this professor and they ask him like basically, hey, do you know who my dad is? They show him a picture of Bailey's dad and they're like, we're looking for him. Do you know his name? He told the story about how he was like the worst student you ever had and you framed his test because he failed it so miserably and hung it on your wall. It would have been like the second year you taught. And he decides to help them because he can hear their like desperation in their voice. And he gets them a class roster from that year and goes through. And I want to say in the book, they find out by going through the class roster, which one her dad is. That's like, they find out his name at that point. In the movie, they do not find out his, or the show, they do not find out his name until later, but they do find a woman named Kate. Um, and her, they end up getting a call from the church and she says there was a preseason game that year. And there was a wedding during one of the preseason games. And preseason games are like scrimmages that are at the stadium. Um, there's before the football season starts. And so because there was this wedding during a preseason game, that's the wedding that they were at. And it was the Reyes Smith wedding. And they look up the people who got married and the lady who got married or the, the man who got married, um, it has the same last name as the, um, the woman or the girl who was a student in this guy's class, uh, who his student said the reason that he failed his midterm was because he had eyes for this girl and he really loved her. And Bailey knows that her parents met in college. So she thinks this must be my mom. And they look up the, the lady and there's a picture of her from college at like an after party for a debate team thing. And the after party for the debate team thing is at this bar called the Never Dry. And so it's on, it's off sixth street, which if you don't know, Austin is like the main bar strip. Um, and they go to the Never Dry. Um, but Hannah says, listen, we don't know who these people are. We don't know if we can trust them. Also, you're a kid, so you can't come into a bar. So she has Bailey go to a coffee shop across the way and she goes into the bar, meets this guy, Turns out, I'll just give you the brief run of it. Um, he is Bailey's biological uncle. Um, his sister was Bailey's mom. She died in a car accident. Uh, he calls it a hit and run. And so all of that is true. And he gets very suspicious of them once they start talking about like Owen. Uh, Bailey comes into the bar and he calls her Kristen. And so we find out that that was Bailey's old name. There are a couple of other flashback scenes that are different from the show or from the, yeah, different in the show than they were in the book. Uh, one of those is there's a scene where in the show um, it makes more sense than it did in the book. So I really liked the way they, they handled that. But in the in the book, um, they all live in a houseboat in Sausalito. It's like houseboats. Um, so because they're living on this houseboat, when there's severe weather, they have to go to a hotel. So in this in the book, what happens is there's a, a storm. So Hannah, Bailey, and um, Owen all go to a hotel to wait the night out and basically 
Bailey is upset because she wanted to go and stay at the hotel that her boyfriend and his parents are at because it's a nicer hotel. Um, and she wanted to be with her boyfriend probably because she's 16. Um, and in the book, Hannah goes down to the hotel bar and Owen is sitting there holding a piggy bank. Um, that is Bailey's piggy bank. And so she's like, first of all, why did you bring the piggy bank? And second of all, like, why do you have it at this hotel bar? Like, that's very strange, um, which it is very strange. And he says something about how like his daughter's going to grow up and leave him and he can't keep her safe and all of this stuff. Um, and on the piggy bank, there's a name on it. Uh, that's not her name, but it's like some name. And I don't remember what the name is. I wish I did, but it is important to the plot later. Um, but in the show, the way they handle that is Bailey wants to go boating with her boyfriend and his parents and her dad says, no, you can't go boating, which I think is a ridiculous thing to say you can't do, but um, it means that he's at his house with this piggy bank. So that makes a lot more sense to me that he wouldn't have taken it out of the home. It seems much less suspicious to me. So I don't think um, in the book, I was like, why would you not think that's super weird as Hannah to see your husband like with his daughter's piggy bank out at a bar somewhere. Um, whereas it makes sense to be in your house and like to be mourning your child growing up. Like that makes a lot more sense to hold this piggy bank. It it made more sense in my brain. So I liked that scene better in the show. Um, however, because she has this flashback, she remembers the name on the piggy bank is the same name that is mentioned in a will that she has seen. Uh, but in the, in the show, she hasn't seen the will yet. So in the show, um, how does this even come about? I don't remember why she has her friend break open the piggy bank in the show now, but she calls Jules and says, Jules break open this piggy bank and inside the piggy bank is a key and the key goes to a safe, right? And they find the safe in a vase that Hannah's grandfather made. Um, I don't know why the vase or the, the safe was in there, but inside the safe is a will. Um, and the will has Owen's real name, which is Ethan Young. That's how they find out his real name in the show. And, uh, they list a couple of things like who gets custody of Bailey. Um, and Hannah gets custody of Bailey if something happens to Owen. But if Bailey, if Hannah can't do it, then Bailey's biological uncle gets custody of her. And that's how she finds out that Owen's, Owen or Ethan, I guess, Ethan Owen trusted the uncle. Um, so that happens in the show. In the book, it's a little more convoluted, but also a little less convoluted. So um, in the book, she is able to access Owen's most recent copy of his will on his computer. And it lists a name as the executor of the estate. That is the name on the piggy bank. And so she breaks open the piggy bank and inside the piggy bank is a safe. And then I don't remember what's in the safe. <laughs> oh, it's his second will. That's what it is. So it's still the second will, but the safe is inside the piggy bank, I think. Um, which again, that would have had to be a very big piggy bank or a very tiny safe. Um, and also, wouldn't that make the piggy bank really heavy? I don't know. So all of that is different in the show than the book. And I like some of the things that the show did about it. Um, like, I, I like that the, the key was in the piggy bank. I don't know if I love the safe was in one of Hannah's grandfather's vases, because where was it before that? Um, but again, the will is very important because we find out Owen's real name and we also find out that you can trust the brother. Um, so that's all good information for Hannah to have. At this point, Hannah gets, we are back at the beginning scene that we were at, at the first like instance when we first started watching the show, which is Hannah's on the phone with her lawyer and Jules. And they say, you have to destroy your phone. Like something bad has happened. They basically find out that Ethan used to be married to this girl, Katie Smith. And Katie Smith's, Kate Smith maybe, I can't remember. But her father um, is like a mob lawyer. And so Owen turned state witness for this mob lawyer. And that's why he's on the run. Um, he was supposed to go into the witness protection program. Didn't end up doing it because they there was a leak in his information. And he was too scared to trust anyone else with him and his daughter's lives. And so he and his daughter just ran. Um, and that's why the U.S. Marshal showed up. Is because he hasn't heard from him since all of this happened and he's got to make sure that Owen is safe uh, because even though technically it's not his job, he still considers it his job. So all of that happens. Um, Hannah destroys her phone. Bailey is missing from the hotel. She does not know where she went. I'm pretty sure in the book, she goes to the US Marshal's office. I can't remember this for a fact, but I remember in the show thinking it was really weird. She ends up going to um, her uncle who owns the bar, his ex-wife's house and they watch like old home movies and they talk about like what happened with her and her dad so Bailey learns all of this information from her aunt um which I thought was different um then and you can let me know because I read the book and then watched the show right after it but I don't remember that being a part of the book I remember in the book I felt like she went to the U.S. Marshal's office and then Hannah goes to the U.S. Marshal's office to find her because she gets a call from the U.S. Marshal that Bailey is there but again, I could be wrong in my memory of what is happening there. The other big flashback scene that is 
different, I suppose, than um, in the show than it is in the book is in the show, Hannah's mom um, just, so in both instances, Hannah was raised by her grandfather because her mom left her. Um, in the book, her dad actually leaves first and then her mom leaves her to go find her dad. And then they decide to be together without her, which is very hurtful and different than what happens in the show. In the show, her mom just leaves because she can't be a mom. I guess her dad was never really involved. And that's sort of the end of that. Um, but both instances, it's very hurtful and it shows that Hannah knows what it's like to not have a mother. So that's like why she's so particular about her relationship with Bailey is because she understands Bailey does not have a mom. Bailey's mom died when she was like three or four. Um, and so she's not trying to replace Bailey's mom, but she's also like, hey, I've been there. I understand what you're going through. And she often talks about how when she was growing up without her mom, her grandfather always knew what to say to her and that she feels like she never knows what to say to Bailey. Um, but we see as things progress, as their relationship progresses, that, that does not ultimately end up being true. Those are all the differences that I have, but basically the way that both the book and the show wind up is Hannah has this hunch that she can trust her brother-in-law from seeing in, or her husband's brother-in-law, I guess. Um, that's kind of convoluted, but her husband's late wife's brother. Um, because he's listed in the will as one of Bailey's guardians if something happens to Owen and something happens to Hannah. So she contacts him and she's talking to the U.S. Marshal's office. They're trying to get her and Bailey to go into witness protection because again, Owen turns state witness against this mob boss. So the mob people are after Owen and they ran Owen's wife down in the street to get back at her, da at her dad, um, who was the attorney because uh, he like lost a case or something like that. And so that's what happened to Hannah's mom. She was run over by a car in the street, um, like a block away from where Hannah and her grandfather were at the time, or Bailey and her grandfather were at the time. Sorry, I think I've been saying the wrong name, but I'm talking about Bailey's mom at this point. Uh, but then um, Hannah has this hunch that she can trust the brother and she thinks that the grandfather wants a relationship with Bailey more than he wants revenge on Owen. So she get, calls the brother-in-law basically and is like, I need you to take me to your dad. And so he does, and she goes to this estate out on Lake Travis, um, which is like 30 minutes away from the city, probably. Probably farther, honestly, with traffic. I It's been a long time <laughs> since I've been down in Austin, but um, I, I mean, it hasn't been that long. I was there for Christmas, but like, since I've been like driving around or out and about in Austin. Um, so she goes to her husband's former father-in-law's house, and um, basically he's like, why would I help you? And she's like, because I think you want a relationship with your granddaughter. And I will not poison the well if you leave us be and let us go back to Sausalito to our lives. Because her big concern, Hannah's biggest concern is if they go witness protection, Bailey has to give up everything she loves. She has to give up her boyfriend. She has to give up her home. They have to move somewhere else. Um, Hannah also has to give up everything she loves. She's currently a wood turner, um, which basically is like a furniture maker type thing from what I understand. I don't actually know. But it's too specific of a career. She'd have to do something like become a dental hygienist or something like totally random. And she has a job that she loves. Uh, Bailey also would have to change her name. She would have to change school. She'd have to lose her boyfriend, all of her friends. She's 16. Um, she'd probably have to dye her hair again. Uh, and she would just like not be able to have the life that she has right now. Like all of her interests that she has right now, she would not be able to pursue anymore uh, because they'd be too identifiable. So um, that's like for her, it's musical theater and singing and stuff like that. She couldn't do that anymore. And Hannah just doesn't want her to have to give up her life. And she doesn't think that's what Owen would want either. And so... She takes this wild bet that she can convince the former father-in-law and he's like, I will let you and your daughter or and my granddaughter go. Um, and I want a relationship with her. Uh, but if Owen ever shows his face again, like you and Owen can never be together. He's got to stay hidden because I will come after him and I will get him basically is what he's saying. Um, and so Hannah makes that choice. She makes that deal and she says, okay. And they decide to go back to Sausalito and live their lives. And Owen's father or Hannah's, <laughs> and Bailey's father is not in their life anymore and Owen is on the run they don't know where he is they don't know anything about him um and then both the show and the book end with like a five-year forward flashback of Hannah has this big gallery opening for all of her wood turning work and Bailey's coming with a new boyfriend his name is Shep that Hannah's gonna meet for the first time and at the gallery Hannah bumps into a man who is Owen um and he basically I don't remember what he says in the show. He says something kind of cryptic. And I think in the book, he says something kind of cryptic too. Um, and then just walks away because, you know, he can't be a part of their life anymore. And I really personally love that ending. I thought it was very impactful and very powerful um, for both the show and the uh, 
the book. I thought it was just a really, really great ending. It did make me sad that I don't think Bailey saw him in the book. I think in the, or in the show, I think in the book she might have, I don't remember, but um, yeah, it's just like, he still wears his wedding ring. That's how she like knows it's him is because they made these wedding rings out of wood um, and he still wears his. And so I don't know if she still wears hers. She might, I'm really not sure, but yeah. So that is the book versus the show. Again, I thought the adaptation did a really good job with all of the source material. There are some things that I'm a little like, I don't know why you would change that, but I'm sure they had their reasons. Uh, but let me know in the comments down below how you felt about this book. Um, also, let me know how you felt about the adaptation. Did you like it? Did you dislike it? Did you think Jennifer Garner did a great job? I love Jennifer Garner. I will always sing her praises. I've loved her since she was an alias in like, what, 2001? So it was like a, it's like a core memory of mine watching Alias with my family when I was like seven. Um, but that's it for the, today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like it if you enjoyed it. Leave me a comment down below letting me know how you felt everything um, went with the show versus the book adaptation. Also, let me know if you have requests of other books that are being adapted that you would like to see this kind of video about. I would love to do them. I have a playlist full of ones that I've already done that I will link for you and I will see you in another video very soon. Bye!